So Tinker versus Des Moines kind of defines like free speech, the fact that symbolic speech is speech. However, there's also a free speech case back from 1919 that actually originated in World War I that's saying that free speech is not unlimited, that there are limits to free speech. So let's look at Schenck versus United States, 1919, Unit 3. First off, the issue clearly is free speech and the uh, typically, specifically in dangerous situations. So if free speech creates potential danger, do you still have free speech? That's the issue in question. Pause it if you need to write it down. Clause, obviously, free speech clause, First Amendment. Free speech clause, First Amendment. Pause it if you need to. All right, so facts of the case, and this is really where the rubber meets the road. You need to know this. So the person on the left-hand side is a socialist um, named Charles uh, Charles Schenck. He is protesting World War I. He says that the military draft in World War I violates the 13th Amendment, which, if you might remember, the 13th Amendment outlawed slavery. So Schenck's argument is that by the government forcing you to be in the military during wartime with the use of the draft, that's the equivalent of being a, a slave. And therefore, um, it's a violation of the 13th Amendment. He ends up handing out leaflets, uh, like little pamphlets, if you will, telling the public to disobey the draft. So this guy's walking around in public areas, like handing these leaflets out saying, don't join the draft, like don't do it, disobey it, which by the way is punishable by prison sentence, <laughs> all right? Uh, and he's arrested under a law called the Espionage Act. Espionage would be like trying to undercut your country. So it's basically almost accusing you of treason. So he gets arrested under the Espionage Act. Schenck sues that um, the Espionage Act is a violation of his free speech, and he has a right to hand out leaflets telling the public to disobey the draft. You might need to pause in order to write down the rest of the notes. Key question. So can you criticize the draft during wartime, encouraging people to disobey it, and is that protected free speech? That ends up being the question. Is it free speech to tell people to violate draft. And by the way, these little uh, pictures down here, these are actually the leaflets, a uh, picture of the leaflets that he was passing out um, during World War I. The decision was nine to nothing for the United States. Uh, Schenck ends up losing in a unanimous decision for the United States. So basically Schenck was told, uh, yeah, thanks guy, but no, you're wrong. Okay, sorry about that, Shank. But you don't have the right to tell people not to do the draft during war. So here's what the Supreme Court said. Um, the man on the left with the uh, handlebarred mustache, Oliver Wendell Holmes, he wrote the majority opinion. Uh, and so they said this. They said, one, the Espionage, uh, Espionage Act is constitutional. Two, the government gets wider authority during wartime situations or during emergencies. So when the government is in wartime, when there's some sort of emergency happening, the government gets a little wider authority to do some crazy crap. Matter of fact, I have a headline down below that is from the coronavirus panic that's happening or the coronavirus um, pandemic, I should say, kind of a panic too. Um, and it says no more than 10 people in one place, Trump said, but why? So, you know, the, there are states, that Trump has put this out as a guideline, President Trump has, and, and the people around him that are doctors, and, and but uh, states are actually enforcing that. And so some states like Virginia actually are saying that if you gather in a larger group than 10, you actually can be fined like $1,200. So like, but normally government can't do that because that's our First Amendment right to assemble. We have a right to assemble in a group. We have a right to maybe go to church. We have a right to go and do a, do a concert. But in this pandemic, which is an emergency situation, suddenly the government has a little bit more leeway to restrict our rights. So that's kind of what the government is ruling here in Schenck versus U.S. is that, hey, you know what? There are certain times where you don't have as free speech as you normally have free speech. There's some restrictions on it. 
just like we talked about in Tinker in the classroom. You don't have a right to just talk all day in the classroom, disrupting class. No, other people have a right to education. So the right to education outweighs your right to free speech. Uh, this is the really big line, and I, I underline it, and you probably should underline it too, because this is the really key point in Shank versus United States. Speech that is a, quote, clear and present danger is not protected. You do not have a right to say things that could cause a danger and a threat to other people's life, life or lives. You can't threaten people and that be considered free speech. And you can be arrested if you threaten someone's life, okay? You can't say, well, that's free speech. I have a right to tell someone I'm gonna, you know, da 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 do whatever to them. You don't, you don't have a right to do that. Actually, it, you, you have a limit to free speech. And, and then in this decision, the most famous part of this decision, something that you should remember, make sure you write it down, make sure you remember it when it comes to Shank versus US, is that if, oh, oh, sorry, I actually jumped ahead. That was me being stupid. But if the draft is disobeyed, the nation is endangered. That was the idea. Here's the key point. The famous line is you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. The, like the, that is like Wendell, all, Oliver Wendell Holmes, like famous line that he's remembered for is that he said, look, you have free speech, but you can't yell fire in a crowded theater because if you do, people are going to get trampled and someone might die. So you can't say things that could get people hurt. There's a limit to free speech. So two things to take away from this. One, um, there's a limit to free speech. And then two, if there's a clear and present danger to that speech, the speech is not protected. So if speech causes a clear and present danger, it's not protected. And the example is you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Awesome decision. Um, Shank versus US, very famous. All right, great. Uh, get the rest of it and study it and do the practices.